in Western Oregon. This is NBC 16 News at 530. Bay Area Hospital in Coos Bay is temporarily furloughing employees on a voluntary basis. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Mazur. The hospital furloughed 71 employees for 45 days. Kelly Dion with Bay Area Hospital says more employees volunteered than they were able to provide. Those not granted a furlough are now on a wait list, which will be enacted if additional furloughs are necessary. Many healthcare facilities around the country have reduced patient volume for safety. That's how we stay in business is by taking care of patients. And when those patients aren't there, um, you know, we don't need as many staff and quite frankly can't support as many staff. Dion says those who are furloughed will keep their seniority and benefits. This isn't the only action taken at Bay Area Hospital. Some departments are reducing hours by 15%, others enacting work share. It's really been cool to see how the, um, how the hospitals pulled together, you know, like we have one department that everybody took one day off a week instead of having to furlough somebody entirely. If the hospital needs to bring back more employees before the 45 day period is up, they can call that employee back to work with 72 hours notice. Dion says Bay Area Hospital is still open. They will continue providing the same level of care as always. Oregon Health Authority announced new testing guidelines in the state. They are meant to prioritize people who may be at higher risk for contracting coronavirus. Those people include essential frontline workers like healthcare and grocery store employees. Undeserved populations, underserved populations, including racial and ethnic minority groups, and those living or working in congregate care or group living facilities. Oregon has surpassed the 2000 mark in coronavirus cases. Oregon Health Authority announced 46 new cases and three new deaths. The death toll now stands at 78 in the state. Two deaths are a man and woman in Washington County and the other a man from Multnomah County who all have underlying medical conditions. Focusing on our region now, Benton County stands at 27 cases. Lynn County has 62 cases. Lane County has 48 cases. Deschutes County has the most in our region with 64 cases. Doug Douglas County has 23 cases. Coos County has two cases. Both cases tested positive at Shutter Creek Correctional Facility. The number of coronavirus cases in Lane County has remained the same since Monday. Lane County Public Health officials say this is a good indication that the county is successfully flattening the curve of coronavirus cases. As far as lifting restrictions, health officials will rely on Governor Kate Brown's guidelines, but the protocol will be adapted to fit what's happening locally. If we can uh, show that we can maintain those physical distancing guidelines during this time, then I think that the hope and the trust in our communities uh, to do that when the restrictions are lifted. A number of criteria must be reached before guidelines are lifted, including increased testing and adequate levels of personal protective equipment. Davis says Lane County is in a good place right now. USA Track and Field announces new dates for the Olympic trials at Hayward Field. Those Olympic trials are set for June 18th to June 27th of 2021. NBC16 Sports Director Brandon Cameraman joins us live from his so-called Casa Cameraman tonight with details about the announcement. Hello, Brandon. Nice to see you. Jacqueline, the newly reconstructed Hayward Field will be a little less new when the Olympic trials happen next year. They will still be called the 2020 Olympic trials as the Olympic Games will still be called Tokyo 2020, but both events now taking place in 2021. In truth, though, much of the event will be the same in terms of the order of events and the schedule and such, but the timing might be a little bit different. If you had tickets for this summer's events, those will still apply to next year, so no problem there. If you need a refund, if you can't make it to next year, they will open a 90-day window for a refund. That opens tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. So it just continues to push off the opening of the new Hayward Field, which was supposed to debut next month for the Pac-12 Championships, followed by the high school state track and field meet. Obviously, both those events were canceled. Next up on the docket was the Olympic Trials. Obviously, now we know that. That postponed until 2021. So the next event that is actually still technically scheduled for the new Hayward Field is the Prefontaine Classic, which is scheduled for the beginning of June. That hasn't been canceled yet, but it is expected that it could be canceled or postponed at some point in the future. But as of now, the Olympic trials are officially scheduled for June 18th through 27th 
of 2021. For the fourth straight Olympics, they will be right here in Eugene. Live from home, Brandon Cameraman, back to you. All right, thanks, Brandon. As you mentioned, I mean, this will be one of the first times Hayward Field will actually be utilized, so that's exciting stuff there. Well, here on NBC 16, we have received many viewer questions asking how foster children are coping during the coronavirus pandemic. Today, NBC 16's Lauren Negretti spoke with court appointed special advocates CASA on changes in foster children support groups. Court appointed special advocates or CASAs are connecting with foster children a little differently these days via phone and video chats. CASA volunteers are, are checking in with their kids a more often. The program director for CASA of Coos County, Greg Dalton, says the frequency has gone from monthly to weekly. Well, the CASA can be appointed and be that one person that follows the child all the way through the system um, until they're either adopted or, or they go home with parents. A CASA volunteer is trained, sworn in by a judge and is assigned. They get to know the child and their needs in the foster home and the needs of the foster parents. The CASA provides an objective report to a judge at all review and permanency hearings with what's in the best interest of the child's future. There's been a great reduction in calls to the um, state child abuse hotline. Dalton says it's primarily because teachers, mandatory reporters, don't have eyes on them. We're predicting that there's going to be a spike of kids coming into care once this pandemic is kind of over with. Dalton says there are nearly 200 foster kids in Coos County and only half of them are being served. They're continuing to work with other community groups and are constantly recruiting. During the COVID-19 crisis, National CASA's pre-service training has been switched to an all online format. Reporting in Coos County, I'm Lauren Negretti. <laughs> We'll get ready for an early fire season. That's what officials are anticipating at the Oregon Department of Forestry. They're not only gearing up for potential wildfires amid severe drought in parts of Oregon. NBC 16's Kelsey Christensen tells us how they are now tasked with additional preparation due to the coronavirus. As if blazing fires and hot conditions aren't enough, coronavirus could make this year's wildfire season even more challenging. The biggest change, recruitment. We'll do a lot of online training where we can. Tom Fields with the Oregon Department of Forestry says the annual fire school in June is canceled. Instead, to comply with COVID-19 precautions, it will likely be a combo of virtual and distance learning. Are you worried that some of the firefighters, especially the newbies, won't be prepared enough? Well, it's always a concern. Fields tells me ODF is trying to best equip firefighters with the tools they need to fight fires. That's fitting in learning wherever possible. Plus safety measures like social distancing on engines, wearing masks, and extra cleaning. But as wildfires ramp up, Fields says the amount of personnel will be the same despite coronavirus. But as the fire risk goes up, then we will continue to, to respond accordingly. And along with all these challenges, Fields says we're already seeing mid to late June conditions as parts of Oregon are in severe drought. And actually, this time of year, we're experiencing uh, more fires than we typically see. So what can you do to help? Be extra cautious and don't burn in your backyard. Since people are home and they've taken this opportunity to clean up around their, their property, uh, what are they going to do with uh, that debris? He says find an alternative to burning or cover up the piles until fall. And don't camp in areas you're not supposed to because campfires can grow into something much bigger way too fast. Reporting in Eugene, I'm Kelsey Christensen. The city of North Bend awarded a bid to remove and trim trees at Simpson Park to Blue Sky Tree Service. The trees are being removed to allow for more sunlight at the playground in the park. The project is also paving the way for a future parking lot, but some people disagree with plans. Well, the sun moves during the day. Are you going to take out all the trees that shade the park, you know, shade the playground a little bit at some time of the day? To me, that's not appropriate at all. She says the trees are symbolic and healthy and removing them would change the character of the park. We contacted the park superintendent for comment and have yet to hear back. And of course, when we are not on air, you can still keep up with us. Make sure to visit our website, NBC16.com, our Facebook page at KMTR News, and download our app, KMTR News, on your mobile device. 
Well, coming up on your only local news at 530, South Eugene High School students are making masks for frontline workers. We take a look inside their at-home workshops. Tonight, we'll look at how the COVID-19 outbreak has exposed long-standing infection control problems with many nursing homes. Also, as parts of the country slowly open up, what's the risk of a second wave of illness on NBC Nightly News?